Christ. It's like we want to do everything but be established in Christ. Yeah. Right? right. We want to be established exactly. in everything else. Yeah. You know, we want to come and guide everybody everybody into everything but mm-hmm. being established in Christ. Mm-hmm. And what, what did Paul pray? He prayed that our hearts and our minds would be kept through Christ Jesus. Right? Mm-hmm. So what he's saying there, there's something contained in the word that was made flesh in Jesus right. that will keep our hearts and our minds. Right? That will be everything that we need. That it will be a balm to our hearts and our minds. It will give us a sound heart and a mind. It will fill us with peace. A peaceful heart is a wise heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. A, a peaceful mind is a mind filled with wisdom. Right? And so it says all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are contained in Christ Jesus. That kind of flies in the face of worldly wisdom. Mm-hmm. Right? Because how can all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge be contained in Christ Jesus? And it doesn't mean that there's a guy that knows everything and you can climb up a mountain and find him in a cave and submit questions yeah. to him and it's tell you. <laughs> it's talking about there's a word that was made flesh in this guy. That everybody can look at, right? And all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge that there is to know about anything is contained in what was made flesh in that guy, right? And that word will keep our hearts and our minds. That's the, really the only word anybody needs to hear, right? Yeah. So we talk about words of wisdom and words of knowledge, and we've made that more like um, fortune telling. Right? In the church. We made it more like fortune telling. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, listen, if what you think about words of wisdom and words of knowledge can re- be reproduced by the people down on Pirate's Alley, then you're not really thinking as accurately as you should be about what a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge is. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. I don't say there can't be a word where you can discern something in somebody's life. I don't say that can't happen, but that's not the primary aspect. And if the fortune tellers down on Pirate's Alley are doing the same thing that we call words of wisdom and words of knowledge, it ought to give us pause. And cause us to think, what is a real word of wisdom? What is the real word of knowledge? Well, Paul comes and says all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are contained in Christ Jesus. So when we need a word, when we needed a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge, God saw what we needed and he came and read our mail through Jesus. Right? He came and discerned our lives in Jesus. And so the best thing we can do to give people words of wisdom and words of knowledge is discern their life for them through the face of Jesus. Wow. Right? And establish not, them. Not saying what you're going to do or what, what you're, you're going to get. Do, what you're going to get. Yeah. Just saying who you are, reminding you. The truth. Yes. Who you are. Like a, a guy, if a guy prays real good worship, we want to come and we want to come and tell the guy how he's going to have a ministry like David. And it's going to be a powerful praise and worship ministry, right? We, and what we really don't understand is that we're speaking to people's flesh kind of. Mm-hmm. And we're puffing them up mm-hmm. without them even asking for it. Right. Mm-hmm. And we're setting their hearts and their minds on oh, this yeah. thing for them to perform. Yeah. Right? And now yeah. they got this heavy word hanging over them. Right? And then they may not ever felt that was their thing anyway. <clears throat> right? And so I wish the church, it's not that we eliminate that, but I wish the church would get more established in all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge that are contained in Christ and realize if we want to read people's mail, quote unquote, for those of you who don't know, that's what they call it in Charismania, where you read their mail. Right. You predict their future, yeah. for lack of a better term. <laughs> right. You read their palm, whatever you want to call it, okay? Um, I wish we'd get more established in knowing how to look into a person's life and discern their life in Jesus, yeah. right? And tell them about their life in Jesus, right? And let their lives be established in that, mm-hmm. right? Let their mm-hmm. lives be established in what it means they were crucified with Christ and they were raised up with Christ. Many people gave me many words of wisdom in my life. I don't say there were none that I didn't need to hear. I don't say we could never come and give a word that's different than that. But the main word that changed my life is when it pleased God to come and reveal his son in me. And he revealed what it meant that I was crucified with Christ and I was raised up with Christ. Yeah. He come and revealed what it meant that he had never left me. He had never forsaken me. That he had never turned his back on me. That he had never abandoned me. He come and discerned my life. The things that had happened in my life weren't a result of him. It was a result of the death. I mean, he just come and discern my life. Now it's like I understand my life. Yeah, right. And in understanding my life by beholding it in the person of Jesus, guess what? I see it all clearly. And when you see it all clearly... Guess what you're doing? You're walking in the truth. Guess what the Bible says? You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And so the greatest thing anybody needs to know is to know the truth about their life. And the way you're going to tell somebody the truth about their life is by revealing Christ. 
to them and in them, and then they're going to see their life in the face of Jesus, and they're going to say, his story is my story. That's right. And they're going to have their story discerned. The greatest thing that can happen inside of a person's heart is for the story of their life to be discerned in the face of Jesus. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, all the crooked th places that they had about their story get whacked in the line and straight. Hmm. Right? Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Right? And that's that that will stabilize people's lives. Mm -hmm. That will stabilize our lives more than anything. Is to see, wait a second. His story's my story. But I was getting my story wrong. I understood the events that had happened in my life, but I had come to wrong conclusions oh. about those events. Uh, what they mean, yes. why they happen. Right the significance of them happening, all of that. I come to the wrong conclusions. But now in Jesus, he come and discern my story for me. So now I see the truth about my life and everything that happened. Yeah. And that made straight the crooked places, right? It made straight my thinking about the things that had happened. It removed the, the wrong conclusions from my heart. And now the truth has made me free. Right. Right? Yes. Right? 